the show. We've got an audience full of NFL fans, including my friends up in the Wayfair VIP lounge. Burr, 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 burr. And of course, we are joined by the stars of the new movie, 80 for Brady, Jane Fonda, Lily Tomlin, Sally Field, and Rita Moreno. So, you've all managed to survive these years in a tough business for women. We talked about that a little earlier, but I, I heard this crazy thing that I actually really hope isn't true. But I heard a director once gave you the worst excuse ever oh. when he tried to sleep with you. Is this right? Is what I heard right? Is yeah, it true? I think so. Yeah. He was a French, not the French director I ended up marrying, but he was a French director. <laughs> and um, <laughs> he came over here to try to cast me in a film he was doing with Alain Delon. They don't know. There'd be moans if you knew who I was talking about. <laughs> yeah. I didn't speak French very well then, and he spoke no English, but I knew that he was telling me that we needed to sleep together because the character in the movie had an orgasm and he needed to see how I <laughs> orgasmed. And boy, did I not know French at that moment. It was like, <laughs> what? I, I don't... What did you... What? I did the movie. I, I mean, but what did you... I did not sleep with him, though. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> but I... I, I that's appalling to me. Like, I just can't, I, have y'all ever had anything like that happen in a movie? Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah, there's worse, sure. believe me. Sure. Much worse. Yeah. You just went to jail. Oh, yep, yep, Not yep, 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 yep. <laughs> Years ago when I was, I wanted, uh, I wanted Gidget's part and I wanted <laughs> Sybil's part. Didn't get either one. You didn't want the flying nun? I wanted everything. <laughs> and so I went up to see a producer, and he said to me, uh, he was all rust. His hair was rust. His suit was rust. His complexion was rust. He was very tanned. And he was, and he was writing, and he said, well, you know, if you don't get this part, you can always come and keep house for me. But a very... Suggestively. What, a, what an yeah, amazing a offer. Thank and I you. said, <laughs> what? I would have said, hard pass. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't that hip. I said, oh, I don't think so. Uh, <laughs> oh, my God. I was invited when I was uh, 19 to a cocktail party of a very famous guy who ran a uh, whiskey industry. And we went up to dance, and he was starting to grind against me. Oh my I mean, there's God. no other way to put it. Yeah. And, uh, and, and he said to me, <laughs> coming out of nowhere, we're dancing, and he's pressing really hard, and he uh. says, you're a sexy little bitch, aren't you? And I said, excuse me? Don't, he said, don't give me that <laughs> He said, I, I, I bet you are really wild in bed. Oh my gosh! I never, I didn't even know his He's name. Probably right. And <laughs> <laughs> what did wait, you say? what did you say? Probably okay. right. <laughs> no, I'm I and, but uh, girlfriends I can say that. I <laughs> pushed him away yeah. and went into the bathroom, and the scar is running, and I'm crying, and I didn't know what to do, <clears throat> and I decided to just leave and, and walk home and home was like miles away. And I, didn't have, I had one dollar in my little purse and li lipstick. And the Mexican guys who were, who were doing the gardens there, because this was a daytime cocktail party, yeah. said to me, can we help you? They just knew, they just knew. And I said, I, I really have to go home. I just have to go home, mm. can you help me? And they took me home to Culver City in our little cottage where my mom, my mom and I lived and drop me off. And those were the first gentlemen I had met that day. Wow. Well, can I say, I'm sorry, you had to go through it. That's a lot of bull Besides, besides acting, you're all known for social activism. Um, is that sense of responsibility something that you've always had or do you feel like you have that because you're in the spotlight, you have the opportunity? For me, it was learning about the Vietnam War. And, and when I really understood what that was about, I could not, do I couldn't something. do anything except try to join the movement to stop it. And that was where it started, because you're pretty active, even after that. Well, yeah. you know, 
you can take anything, sexism, racism, misogyny, homophobia, whatever, the war, and if you really get into it and study it and learn about it and the history of it and the, everything's connected. There'd be no climate crisis if it wasn't for racism. How do you, how do you get to that? Tell me. Where would they put the <laughs> Where would they put the poison and the pollution? They're not gonna put it in Bel Air. They've got to find some place where poor people or indigenous people or people of color are living. Put it there, they can't fight back. And that's why a big part of the climate movement now has to do with climate justice. You know, yeah. the first... It's actually, we just actually covered, it's, it, it, we just covered, it's called The Descendant, and, and it's, oh, yeah. and yeah, and Questlove was on yeah. here, and, and um, we had, you know, people from the, the documentary on here, and it, it, that's part of the problem with Africatown, like, they, they're getting pushed out because they don't have the opportunity for the education to get out, to fight back, to, and they, they just, they're, they're just encroaching, like, you know, uh, upon their, their, their land. Yeah. Yeah. That they've had since they were, like their ancestors, their descendants of people that w were kidnapped. Yeah. You know, so it's it's a it it's absolutely true, and I'm glad you actually asked her to explain that because that's important. I don't think people see that the parallel or how the, it's all connected, but 100% true. Um, is it Rita? Is this true? I didn't know this, but you were at the march on Washington um, where Dr. King gave his "I Have a Dream" speech. What was that experience like? Oh, <laughs> that's incredible. I, I really can't even talk about it without immediately getting goosebumps. I was there. Harry Belafonte, who was a big star then, mm -hmm. a, a black, wonderful singer, decided to put a whole Hollywood, uh, there I am, with Sammy Davis Jr. And I'm only making a face because it was boiling, boiling hot. Anyway, Dr. King was about, I'll make this shorter, <laughs> was about to speak. And he started a speech and next to him was sitting uh, his dear best friend, Mahalia Jackson, who was a so wonderful gospel singer. And he started a speech that she wasn't expecting. I, I, I seem to be the only one who saw this happen. Uh, and she tugs on his jacket and she says, Martin, tell him about the dream. Uh, tell him about the dream, Martin. And he changed his speech. I mean, I, I just could barely say this without crying. And he started, he started to say, I had a dream. Yeah. And I think, wow. I, th I was there. I saw this. I saw this happen. You I felt saw it. Thousands, thousands of people at the pool and back, mm -hmm. you know, with the monument. Mm -hmm. I saw all this and I was there. And I'll never forget it as long as I live. Oh. That's a powerful. <laughs> Powerful thing <laughs> to be a part of. I this is completely switching it, but I also heard you had some really useful advice from Dolly Parton. Can you share that? <laughs> because this Can is I so actually... Dolly Parton. <coughs> I oh, love dear. it. So when I was doing Violet's part in the TV series of uh, Nine to Five, Dolly came in to do the song all over again. She wanted to do a recording just of her voice singing that, not for the movie, but for our series. So I said, can I, I, I wanna ask you something a little personal, may I? Sure. And I said, okay, have you ever had the experience of getting on stage, about to maybe sing a song, and you get a big gas bubble in your belly? <laughs> that is not great. <laughs> so I said, what do you do? And she laughed and she giggled and she said, what do you do? <laughs> and I said, well, I wait for the trumpets to play. <laughs> I thought that the story was she said, I wait for the trumpets, that was you saying, I wait for the trumpets. <laughs> that just got better. <laughs> oh, she loved it, she laughed so uh. hard. But it's true, that's what I would do, I'd wait. Oh my God. And then they'd be going <laughs> Everyone that's ever seen you in concert right now is like, I wonder if she was ripping them while I was watching from afar. <laughs>